this video, we're going to cover nitrogen excretion via the urea cycle. We're going to break down how ammonia is transported from the muscle and other tissues to the liver, where it's converted to urea and excreted safely in the urine. And then we're going to see how the urea cycle connects with the citric acid cycle. So let's get started. Now, if you've seen the lecture on amino acid metabolism, we covered how an amino acid is broken down, how the amino group is removed and separated from the carbon skeletons. If you haven't watched that lecture, go watch that first and then come back to this one because you're going to see how they connect. Okay? But if you have seen it, let's do a quick recap anyways. In the cytosol of hepatocytes, amino acids transfer their amino group to alpha-ketoglutarate to form glutamate, and that amino acid becomes an alpha-keto acid. Now, glutamate needs to release the ammonia, so it's going to enter the mitochondria, and its amino group is removed via oxidative deamination, catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. Then this ammonia will be diverted to the urea cycle. The glutamate now becomes alpha-ketoglutarate because we have removed the amino group and it can enter the citric acid cycle. So before we go through the process of how muscles and other tissues transport ammonia, let's answer the question of why we actually need to. Why do we need to remove the ammonia and excrete it safely? That's because ammonia is toxic. If the brain gets damaged due to ammonia toxicity, it can cause cognitive impairment, epileptic seizure, or in severe cases, it can cause the brain to swell, leading to death. So we need to transport free ammonia from extrahepatic tissues and transfer it to the liver or kidneys. And this is done by converting ammonia to a non-toxic compound. And a non-toxic form of ammonia is glutamine from muscle and other tissues. So glutamine is going to transport ammonia in the bloodstream. Ammonia is going to be combined with glutamate to generate glutamine, catalyzed by glutamine synthetase. This occurs in two steps and requires ATP. So let's break down these two steps. So first, glutamate and ATP react to form ADP and a glutamyl phosphate intermediate, which then reacts with ammonia to produce glutamine and inorganic phosphate. So glutamine is a non-toxic transport form of ammonia. And then glutamine is going to be transported in the blood to the liver and kidneys where the enzyme glutaminase comes in and converts glutamine to glutamate and ammonium ion. The ammonium ion in the liver is going to be dispersed of by urea synthesis. Now, there's another transport of ammonia, okay, ammonia from skeletal muscles to the liver, and this is through alanine. We covered this in the amino acid metabolism lecture, but we're going to do a quick recap anyway. So this is done via the glucose alanine cycle. In muscle, amino groups are collected in the form of glutamate by transamination. So transamination where we're transferring the amino group from the donor to the acceptor, and glutamate can be converted to glutamine, like we discussed, or it can donate its amino group to pyruvate. So, pyruvate is high in muscles due to glycolysis. The enzyme catalyzing this is alanine amino transferase. So then, once we've produced alanine, alanine travels in the blood and is transported to the liver. Once it's in the liver, the cytosol of hepatocytes, alanine amino transferase is going to transfer the amino group from alanine to alpha-ketoglutarate, forming pyruvate and glutamate. So then, glutamate can enter the mitochondria where glutamate dehydrogenase reaction is going to release that ammonium ion and that ammonium ion is going to be converted to urea for excretion. Urea is non-toxic and water-soluble. It's exported to kidneys and excreted in the urine. So now let's subtract complexity and break down nitrogen excretion via the urea cycle. So the urea cycle occurs in the liver and requires ATP. So glutamate and glutamine releases the ammonia, and the ammonium ion generated in liver mitochondria is immediately used together with carbon dioxide as bicarbonate produced by mitochondrial respiration to form carbamyl phosphate 
in the matrix. So this ATP-dependent reaction is catalyzed by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. So from here, the carbamoyl phosphate now enters the urea cycle. And the urea cycle has four enzymatic steps. So let's break that down. Okay, so carbamyl phosphate donates its carbamyl group to ornithine to form citrulline. This reaction is catalyzed by ornithine transcarbamylase. So that's the first step. We produce citrulline. Now the next two steps brings in the second amino group. The source is aspartate, which is generated in mitochondria by transamination. So oxaloacetate is turned into aspartate. And aspartate is going to be transported into the cytosol where it's going to be part of the second step. And the second step is a systolic reaction catalyzed by arginino-succinate synthetase. And this requires ATP here. And it proceeds through a citral AMP intermediate. And in the second step, arginino-succinate is produced. So then moving on to the next step, arginine or succinate is going to be converted to arginine and fumarate. And this is catalyzed by arginine or succinase. Now fumarate here is going to be converted to malate and then malate is going to enter the mitochondria where it can join the citric acid cycle intermediates. So then let's go back to the arginine we produced here and move on to step number four. So arginine is going to yield urea and ornithine. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme arginase. So then we produce urea, which is our objective. And ornithine here is going to be transported into the mitochondria where it can participate in the urea cycle again. Now let's move on to the next part of this lecture. And that is looking at how the citric acid cycle and the urea cycle can be linked. So the fumarate produced in the arginine or succinase reaction is also an intermediate of the citric acid cycle. And the cycles here are interconnected. Now there is no transporter to move the fumarate generated in systolic arginine synthesis back into the mitochondrial matrix. However, fumarate can be converted to malate in the cytosol or malate can be transported into mitochondria for use in the citric acid cycle. And that is how the citric acid cycle and the urea cycle is connected. So that is nitrogen excretion via the urea cycle. In this lecture, we learned how ammonia is transported from the muscle and other tissues to the liver where it's converted to urea and excreted safely in the urine. We talked about what makes ammonia toxic and what it can do to the body and the complications it can cause. We broke down the four steps of the urea cycle and the two sources of amino groups that participate in the urea cycle and how the urea cycle and the citric acid cycle is connected. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow it down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating!